I was inspired to get involved with Save Rock Hall um, because I've lived here all my life. It's been my playground. I've seen the hall go from a home to a dilapidated building and Banana came along and I thought, brilliant, somebody's coming to save us. Um, it's almost like a green refuge for people. It's a, it's a space where you can get out and enjoy a bit of countryside very close to your home. And I think those spaces are so important for people. Well, there's a tremendous story that's actually hidden under the ground in this park. And the purpose of this project is to reveal that. We've been doing quite a lot of activities. Something's been going on every month. So we've done creative writing sessions, we've done laughter yoga sessions, we've done creating a wildflower garden with Bolton Conservation volunteers. We've done heritage walks with the Canal Society, for example. Um, now we're doing the archeological dig. That's been going on since last week. The purpose of the dig is to investigate the industrial heritage of Rock Hall and Moses Country Park, to promote the industrial heritage of Bolton and Rock Hall in general, and also uh, there are intended some capital works on Rock Hall to refurbish it in the future, so it'll also help to inform those capital works. Some people have questioned, you know, uh, why was the £99,600 that we got, why wasn't it spent on the hall to renovate it? But it's going to cost, well, uh, about three years ago it was assessed at half a million pounds to renovate the hall. Um, that's now gone up. So 99000 is a drop in the ocean. But you can't just go to the lottery and ask them for two and a half million, you know, for example. You've got to do these initial stages. And the reason for the lottery funding is that they one of the outcomes is that they want you to reach a wider audience with regards to heritage. So we needed to use that money, first of all, to do activities like this, to bring people to the park, to show them about the hall and teach them about the history. You can learn a lot from the archaeology about the circumstances that people lived in and how they worked. And I think it's nice that people around here learn um, about their ancestors, uh, a lot of people who live in the Farmworth area wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the, the work that went on around this area. I think it's a place where actually people are interested in their, in their heritage and their history. Everyone sort of knows about Rock Hall, knows a bit about, about its history, but they want to know more. So the purpose of the dig is to identify what uh, archaeology may be here at Rock Hall um, and sort of bring in the engagement for the community uh, in the area of Farnworth. We're trying to map out the full extent of the site. There's lots of other buildings in the area that are completely demolished and now underground. We have the maps of course, detailed mapping of the, of the area, but physically not, nothing is visible above ground today. So it's our job as archaeologists to try and investigate those remains, figure out what's where and what purpose it was used for, and all of this is part of the wider project to hopefully restore and turn this area into a slightly better loved community space that people actually get to use and enjoy. This is a fascinating project, it's a beautiful and wonderful park and it's great to be able to investigate the history of that park and the heritage of that park. We're doing geophysical survey workshops, so this is where we do remote sensing. Uh, we try and map what's under the ground without actually digging it. And we're training volunteers how to do geophysics and this is looking for the footprint of Bale House, uh, the 13 bedroom mansion which was a very substantial house in the park. So that will then help, help the targeting of excavations in the future. We're actually going to open up some little mini trenches that we call test pits just to get a sneak peek under the ground and see what's there. And then towards the end of the week, we run a couple of days of find sessions. So we have a look over what we found. So we get this story from start to finish. Really nice, I think, when you find little things that tell a bit of a human story, some personal possessions or some things that were loved and maybe lost. It would be great if we could just find some little hints of that. I've come down to, uh, to, to, to volunteer and help out and I'm quite curious as to what the archaeological dig is going to uncover. I'm a student in history and history is something I love and always have loved and we've never had archaeology in this area. I'm interested in digging and history and old buildings and all stuff like that. Um, I don't normally go on with grubby fingernails, but we've been in the trenches digging, we've been shifting mud, we've been sifting through clay, so it's just been hands on deck 
managing to get involved with everything. Archaeology is something I want to study in the future and getting field work is really important for young people and in Bolton we never get the opportunity as it is so built up usually. What are you hoping to find? Lots of a hoard of gold coins. <laughs> but realistically, anything the footprint of uh, Vale House is a big one for us if we can find that. One of the trenches was at the front of the building. Uh, the idea is to find people going in and out of the building to see if they've dropped anything on the way in. If anyone dropped maybe buttons or pennies, stuff like that really. Over the past few days we've had a little bit of pottery. Oh yeah, the marble out of, you know, one of the um, old glass bottles, the marble stoppers, it was one of those as well. A number of floor tiles that are in situ, so actually in place of where they would have been. We found a very early clay smoking pipe which could be over 200 years old. Well, we found this coin, <laughs> so this was one of our exciting finds. It's a, I believe, a, a Victorian threepenny bit from 1883 and it was found about in the middle of that trench there really old and we cleaned it up because originally it was black when we found it and we couldn't even read it but once we cleaned it up it was shiny silver so yeah. We found um, what could be either a, a chemist store or, or a perfume bottle um, with London engraved on the so it's it's finding those sorts of little uh, snapshots of people's lives over the 200 years or so that this this building's been here. We've involved people from an educational point of view learning about archaeology and they've learned a lot about Rock Hall. That's the key thing. The archaeological dig has been the biggest draw. We've had so many people here since last Thursday, every single day, asking us about the project. So it's been really, really good. What I have seen throughout my time so far is the passion that has gone behind this project. From um, Banana Enterprise, who are um, kind of running all the events, from the providers, there is so much passion behind what people are doing here, from the activities that people are doing, from just being in the park, from doing all of the amazing things that have been going on. There is so much passion behind this, and I think the local community would benefit so much if they were able to um, carry on and, and do the rest of the project as well. They've enabled people like me to, to gain those skills and then um, sort of have conf confidence to, to, to get in the trench and, and dig. The digging out was very, very fun. Even the monotonous part of like just deturfing, that was exciting for me because I've never done it before. It's been empty for so long and now we get it up and running, everybody will benefit from it. I feel like it would just bring the community together on a project that is so big because I've never been involved with any of the people here and it's just a nice way to meet more people in the area and kind of connect with your community more, as a young person especially. And I think whilst the space at the moment is great, it could be so much more. And having that visitor centre, being able to um, use the space to educate children and to have all of these amazing activities that have gone down really, really well. I think being able to do that in the future and be able to carry on this work, um, I think is so important. So the team have been amazing in the work that they've done so far to engage um, people who wouldn't have been engaged six, 12 months ago um, and to the Heritage Lottery Fund, um, just fund it. I mean, it's such, a, it's, it's such an easy win um, and such a brilliant project. Why wouldn't you want to invest in, um, in this brilliant um, asset for the town? If the lottery gave us the next phase of the funding to actually make this happen, this vision we've got, reopening of the hall for the community, I just, I, I, I just can't describe how I would feel. I just, I'd be so proud of everybody. If the hall was renovated and opened again in the future, it would be phenomenal. I feel overjoyed. I'd say buzzing. <laughs> Ecstatic. Elated. Fabulous. Yeah, I am delighted, yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> I'll be absolutely ecstatic. Fantastic. Inspiring. I would say it was amazing. Revolutionary, really, for the area. Brilliant. Just be a valuable asset, that's two words. <laughs> Without the support of the community and our volunteers, our steering group members, without that support, we couldn't do it. So I really am motivated now to see this hall open and I hope the National Lottery Heritage Fund will fund us and see the benefits to the community. It's such a shame when things become targets of, of vandalism and 
things just kind of become a bit of a, a shameful spot that people don't really get a chance to engage with. So I think in this beautiful park that's clearly well loved, there's people everywhere. If we turn this into a focus of the park and the area instead, if we can regenerate it, bring a bit more attention and a bit more money and have it be a space that everyone can enjoy and have access to, I think that just really benefits communities. We desperately want the lottery to help us out. Um, I, I just feel it's like a last chance saloon that if, if, if they don't help us out, that um, no one else is going to come along and do it. And this is what you want the lottery to do. You want it to be involved in, in local, local things. It's a beautiful place and a beautiful building. It'd be nice if we could have a cafe and look at the history like we could used to do where Rock Hall had um, the craft shop and the history shop, you know, the museum. And I used to find that fascinating when I was a teenager. Jane has got a fantastic vision of the future for it and just to be part of it is really meaningful to me. And I'm enjoying the fact that and excited about the fact that it could be something even better than it was um, in, in the past and I just really believe it'll be really good for our community and people's well-being. We get to understand the history and the heritage of a place but then we get to take that forward into the future as well and we get to actually build something going forward not just about what's been here before. Many people who play as a kid now will be kind of have an emotional attachment to this place for the rest of their lives so I just think um, the potential uh, for what could be done down here is just huge.